welcome to Poland in the heart of Europe. It's home to a population of fiercely patriotic people. But during four decades of communist rule, there was little incentive to work hard in the vast state enterprises which dominated this country. An attitude summed up in a famous local saying, whether you stand up or sit down, you will still get paid. So is democracy delivering a sense of entrepreneurial freedom here? We'll be finding out through the working lives of six very different individuals and hearing about their aspirations for the future. The medieval city of Kraków is Poland's second largest city and was the country's capital until the beginning of the 17th century. Located in the south of the country, it's now home to three quarters of a million people. But I'm getting away from the well-worn tourist route to meet someone who works in a very different part of the city. Communism has really left its mark on this area, not least the state of the roads. I'm now off to a place synonymous with the Soviet era, Kraków's easternmost district. Purpose-built for heavy industry, Nova Huta was the socialist ideal. Factories sprung up alongside stark blocks of flats to house the industrial workers. In 1954, the area's centerpiece, the Vladimir Lenin Steelworks, opened. But what was once deemed as a beacon of Soviet success eventually became its downfall. In the 1980s, Nova Huta was the scene of demonstrations calling for the fall of communism. In the late 1970s, this vast plant employed over 38,000 people, producing 6.5 million tonnes of steel. It's now home to the most modern hot strip mill in Europe. Richard Wilk is a process engineer at this plant, which is now owned by the international conglomerate ArcelorMittal. He joined the company straight from university five years ago and says this is his dream job. Um. It's a very modern steelworks and working alongside such new technology is really interesting. There are lots of things to do programming these machines. This steel plant was opened in the 50s. As for the modernization process, I say it's like walking out of a Stone Age cave onto the streets of Manhattan in New York. Richard's eight-hour shift starts at seven in the morning. Workers here earn approximately $1,200 a month. That's higher than the national average, which is around $1,000. My work is based on ensuring the rolled steel is meeting the required quality. So checking the thickness, the width, quality and temperature is my responsibility. Of course, everything is computerized, but if something is not as it should be, then it's up to me to work out what's gone wrong and fix it. When I am on the shop floor, I check how the metal is behaving, if it's going in a straight line or curving or is bent. I mainly work at a computer analysing the data. It's good if the process goes without a hitch, but for me personally, I like it when something happens. Then the work becomes challenging and I have to quickly find the cause of the problem. After a day working with heavy metal, Richard's busy social life is taken up with his other passion, rock music, playing bass guitar in two bands. For me, the best way to relax is by playing and writing music. We play at different parties and nightclubs. It's real party music, so people have a good time. Music is my hobby. I do approach it professionally, but it's just a hobby. My job is the means by which I can support myself. The music comes after work. So what do you spend your money on? Do you spend it on any luxuries? I try to put money aside so that in future I will be able to stop renting and buy my own place. I know my friends abroad get paid a lot more doing the same type of job. I don't earn the sort of money that would enable me to go on holiday abroad or skiing in Austria, for example. So what are your ambitions? Where do you see yourself in five years' time? Work at the Steelworks is a calling of sorts for me because I get to work with the latest technology. It's a global company, so there are lots of opportunities to move around without leaving the company. Privately, I think I'll always be connected to Krakow, and I would like to continue to play music here. Playing music with your friends is an excellent way to get over the working day.
From an industry embracing the changing face of Poland, we're heading into the countryside where farmers are struggling to maintain a way of life that has always been at the very heart of this country. Over 60% of Poland's total land is agricultural and the farms tend to be relatively small like this one, no bigger than seven hectares. They're largely family-run businesses and even in communist times they were predominantly privately run. The state did have a big say in how the farms were run but it meant that farmers were largely self-sufficient. Small farms are struggling to meet the increased regulations which came when Poland joined the European Union in 2004. Many came under pressure to sell up to large companies, but our next worker, Jadwiga Wopata, is passionate about the benefits of staying small. Once a high-flying IT consultant, Jadwiga turned her back on city life to return to her roots. This is very small farms. It's, uh, uh, I have this uh, 15 years. It's my own. It's uh, next to my home village, uh, the village where I am now living. And uh, we produce here vegetable fruits and we have a very small uh, uh, number of animals. Uh, basic reason is for to have compost. What we are getting from the farm is basically for self-sufficiency. 65% uh, food we have for ourselves and for our guests which are visiting us because we are running also ecotourism here. And, uh, and, and then th that's, that's my income. I sell very little extra. <coughs> for me it's more important this as aspect of to be self-sufficient for myself and for the guests. And uh, that's why I am busy with ecotourism, that's why I am busy with education. And this is extra income to the farm. So it's your second income. How much do you make from ecotourism and your workshops? Well, it's varies from the, from the year, how it is, uh, but at least a, a, a extra like up to 40%. What about those luxuries? Can you go on holiday? Oh, that's an interesting question. You know, uh, <laughs> I think I... I uh, I, I don't go for holiday. Uh, I think I, I may be already like at least ten years for in classic meaning of the words of holiday. If I go, I want to learn something more about life, about life of the other people. So it is very much hand on, hand, hands on holiday. Exactly the same what we propose here for the people. As well as having tourists stay at the farm, Jadwiga runs workshops for children and other farmers to keep traditional skills alive. All workshop is for this to show them that uh, from where, for example, is coming flour and then what we can do from flour. So you can make cookies, you can make bread and so on. This is a very traditional uh, handicraft from this region. Mm -hmm and the farmers also are painting them uh, in very particular way. <laughs> and uh, this is the way of uh, uh, additional income which farmers are getting. So they sell this as, and I'm sure they do yes. a better job than I've done, but they sell this as uh, to tourists? Yes, they, they sell, the, sell this to tourists. It's for me break and pleasure to go to work with the animals and with the soil. I really like it. When I go to the city for some conference and meeting, and when I'm coming back here, I feel, oh, I am in paradise. <laughs> Kraków's network of trams clatter their way through these streets, bringing workers from the less expensive outskirts into the city centre. Trams have been part of this city for more than a century. Around half a million journeys are taken every single day. Maria Wierzbanowska has been driving trams for over three years. Her rented flat is close to the tram terminal so she can walk to work. She's one of 70 female tram drivers at the depot, which employs more than 400 drivers. Since I was a child, I was always interested in other modes of transport. It was hard to find work after university where I studied marketing and management. So after applying to various firms, my application to be a tram driver was accepted. 
It's like learning to drive a car. We have around 60 hours of lessons. Then you take an exam, just like a normal driving test. So tell me about your working day. What time do you start? The earliest I start work is around four in the morning. If it's an afternoon shift, I start at around midday or two o'clock, and I don't finish until after midnight. I work four days on the morning shift, then I have a day off, and I work four days starting in the afternoon. A standard shift lasts 10 hours, but they can vary. Some are only four hours long. And what do you find difficult about the job? The weather has a big impact on the job. In the autumn, the leaves cause a hazard. The tram is very heavy and we have to control it if it's slippery. It's very hot in the summer and cold in the winter. You spend most of your time in the same seated position, so it's crucial to stretch your legs and get your circulation flowing. Every now and again I have to get out to physically change the track with a key if the automation doesn't work. Maria earns around $1,200 a month but finds it expensive living in the city and has to carefully prioritize what she spends. I think that compared to different jobs in a similar position, I don't earn too badly. At the moment, my salary supports me, but with petrol prices going up, I wonder whether I'll be able to keep my car. What about hobbies and holidays? What can you afford to do in your own time? I have the type of hobbies that don't cost the earth. I ride my bike and I've recently started Nordic walking with sticks. A few times a month I treat myself to meeting up with friends for a coffee in town or a trip to the cinema, but generally I have to count the pennies. I can't afford to buy a coffee every day. Holidays abroad are practically out of the question. For me, lying on a beach is boring and visiting interesting places around the world is simply too expensive. I take advantage of a scheme at work where every two years the company supplements your holidays. You hand in receipts to prove you've been away and you get about $15 a day back. Most of the companies, which were once state-owned, and the larger new firms have financial packages like this. You're on your own a lot. Does the job ever get boring or lonely? Maybe sometimes when the weather's bad, but you need to stay focused and in control. Even if nothing is happening, something can suddenly occur which is dangerous. You need to have eyes in the back of your head. Being able to steer such a big vehicle gives me an enormous amount of pleasure. Coming up after the break, I'll be meeting a council employee with a job for life. He works a 24-hour shift over 50 metres up there.